on this new technology, and it has been quite a challenge, and there's definitely a learning curve. So I'm praying that you were there and they mean. So what I want to do is to tell you today, we are going to be working with a new product, a new product that is in our celebration catalog or brochure. And it is the Wonderful World Stamp Set and DSP. And it is on page 14 and 15 in your celebration catalog. I looked and looked and could not decide what I wanted to share with you tonight, but I kept coming back to this because I truly do love this stamp set. And we're going to learn a new technique while we're working with it. So let's get started. I'm going to pull you down. Hmm, I am wondering. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure that this is exactly going to work. But anyway, we're going to try it. This is the Wonderful World DSP that I have just fallen in love with. And you can see I have used it quite a bit. This is the paper that we're working with today. And on the back of it, the back side is the pattern two that you will be seeing in the tutorial if you look at that. Now there's some other beautiful papers in here too. We're going to be using this. And as you can see, I've got some scraps and that's why we're going to be doing a card. On the back of it, it's another floral pattern and this gorgeous pattern right here. On the back of that is the purple. Then we have this one. And the back of that is this pattern. The darker one has the tiny little flowers in rows. And I think the one you haven't seen might be this one. And on the back of it is this beautiful pink with this, looks like little diamonds in it. So there are a lot of papers here that you can choose from to work with. But like I said, we're going to be working with this and then the opposite side, which is the green. So I'm going to get all these scraps and all of these papers out of the way because I have already gotten our papers cut for tonight to save time. So this is the card we're going to be making. As you can see, here's the designer series paper with a stamped image that matches this in the paper and the opposite side is here. So we have got a new product. We have got a new technique I'm going to be showing you and a fun fold on top of that. So let's get started. We're going to start out with the colored cardstock Mossy Meadow. I want to make sure I keep these in order. And this is five and a half by eight and a half. It's cut at one or scored, I should say, at one and three fourths and at six inches. Now, you don't um, have to fold this immediately if you wanted to work with your outer layers flat down, but I prefer to go ahead and fold it and I creased it with my bone folder right here and right here. And then I feel like I'm ready to work because my card is the way it will be when it's finished. So the first piece that we're going to be working with, actually it goes this way, is going to be um, the designer series paper and it is going to be if i can find it that's the inside piece here is the 
I got to make sure that I'm doing this right. This is the outside where it says um, designer series paper. That will go. No, that's the inside. And the reason, because I cut this pattern in the wrong direction. So I'm using it for the inside right here. This side, which is in the right direction, will go here. And that is what we're going to be gluing down first. And that measures one and a fourth by five and a fourth. Okay, I'm going to move this one to the side so it doesn't get in the wrong place. And I'm going to get my glue out. And because I want this side to show, I'm putting glue on the green side. This green side is so pretty. I just love it. And I, I love the paper too. All right, so here, I want to get that pretty even. With glue, you can sort of move it around a little bit until you get it just where you want it to be. And that's not possible when you're using tape. Although I do love the runner's tape and I use it in some instances. So here we go. That's down. Now I'm going to take next, instead of putting this down next, I'm going to take this panel and it is two and one fourth right here by five and one fourth. And it's going to go right there. And I want to put this down making sure that my flowers are going in the right direction and that I line it up across the top. So I'm going to put glue here. And down. Like I've said before, it really doesn't take a lot of glue because this is so... Um, Effective, I guess I should say. It works so well. It glues um, with tiny little um, bits of it and it dries clear and it dries fast. Okay, so now we've got our outside here. So now what we want to do is we want to get these inside panels. Now, since this is the piece that I cut in the wrong way, I'm putting glue on it. And it's going to be showing the green side, the leaves, the coordinating pattern. And that's what you want when making this card, that you've got two patterns and that they coordinate. Okay, there's that one. Now, I've also got this one. And it's going to go right here. Now, I was trying to see. I don't think it's going to matter here. So, I'm going to put glue here. And now I'm going to glue this down, trying to get the same space as I got over there and here. So it will line up here too. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so there we've got the outside and the inside. Now, next step, we are going to go ahead and use this small piece of white, basic, basic white cardstock, two and a half here by four and a fourth here. And this is what we're going to stamp our image on. Now, if you will look, this finch card, this is this piece right here, the piece in front. Okay, so when we get started with our wonderful world stamp set, we're going to be using this one right here. So I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to lay it down here and I'm going to get my big block. And I am going to stick it down just like that. Okay. Now, with this, 
you have both the flower and the stems. So Anne is going to ink it. When you ink it up, it's going to show the entire flower. This is a 3D stamp. Because of that, you're going to have to somehow ink up the flower and the greenery differently unless you just want it all one color. And so what I decided to do is I wanted to try and match this flower. Now, it says that Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis are the two colors that would probably, uh, that are in this um, coordinating DSP. So I'm going to start out with my Orchid Oasis and I'm going to use the brush tip. And I'm just going to run this over just like this. And I'm going to leave a couple of spaces where I didn't get it all. And the reason for that is I'm going to go back and fill it in with Highland Heather. Now, Highland Heather is, is the background, and it picks up a lot of this in the flower. Um, what I found when using Starry Sky is that it was just way too blue. So I'm going to do it this way, and we're going to hope for a great image. Okay, so now I've gone over that. The next thing we're going to do is take our Mossy Meadow. These are Stampin' Right markers. They are water-based, and this is what you want to use when you use your rubber stamps. I do have this other flower to go, but I wanted to go ahead and show you this. And we're using this brush tip in. So I'm going to come in here just cover this up right here is where it meets that flower and I want to be real careful right there now before I do this I'm gonna go ahead and do the flower because I don't want to put my hand down in it so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did before with this one And I'm not being too particularly careful here because I know that I want the Highland Heather to come and fill it in. And there are a lot of little places that this Highland Heather will show up. I'm going to try and cover it well. Okay, let's get it right there. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take the Mossy Matta Stampin' Right marker and I am going to color this in. And all you have to do really is I could just sort of do it on its side and it, it really does a really good job of just filling right in. All right, now, because we've waited just a minute, this may have dried somewhat, so what you need to do is just huff on it. <sighs> you heard me do that. That reactivates the ink. Well, let's see. All right, so let's see what we get here. Okay, and that looks similar to that. Now, it's not going to be completely filled in because that's just the nature of the stamp, but we also have uh, the greenery and we have got the flower. Now, I want to back this. This is Mossy Meadow, two and three fourths by four and a half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this glue again. And I'm going to double it on here. My glue is running low. 
I can tell. Okay. There, I think we've got it pretty even. We want to even it, making sure we're centering it. All right, and then what we're going to do is you're going to glue it down here. So it will, when you glue it, there's going to be the same space here and here and here and here. And that is about an inch over. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I look at this to make sure it's this side. I'm going to put glue on here about an inch over. And now I'm going to try and make sure that this is glued down. And I think that looks pretty good. Hmm, did pretty good. It didn't come out that size. Okay, very good. All right, I'm pleased with that. So now we're going to go to this center portion. This middle portion is going to need cardstock, white, basic white cardstock. That's four and an eight by five and a fourth. So I'm going to put my glue on this. This is a much bigger piece to glue. Okay. You know what? I just did committed a cardinal stamping sin. You're supposed to stamp first before gluing, before pasting. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed that our stamping turns out okay. So for the inside, I'm going to be using this flower right here. I'm going to put it in this corner. So I'm going to pull it out, and we're going to have to do the same thing to it that we did to the other step. So I'm going to get my block. That's a little bit small. So this one is a... Well, where is it? A D. Okay, so for the flower, now this flower, if you will look right here, it is this color, which is rich razzleberry. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to need two colors for this one. I'm just going to color this right here with rich razzleberry and you can just use the side of the marker and it just goes on very easily like that but I am going to use the same green which is the mossy meadow and I'm going to use this brush end I think I think on these leaves there's sort of a light, lighter color in the center. So I'm going to try and put some pear pizzazz in the center, I think. So I'm just going to outline it like this, like that. So now I'm going to get some pear pizzazz, which is a lighter green. And I'm going to find the brush tip, which is right here. And then I'm going to go in and color and just sort of blend it together. Okay, Let's see if I can get this one. All right, now 
I'm going to huff on it. And then we're going to stamp. It's the moisture in your breath that actually reactivates it. All right, there we go. All right, so now what I need across here, and you can see, look at the difference in the leaves, the variegation there, and the darkness here didn't show, show up as well. This one showed up much better. So I guess maybe I needed to huff a little bit more. Okay, so what I decided I'm going to put across here is sending many thanks for all you do. So I'm going to pull out, this is a different type of stamp set. This is your photopolymer. The other was the rubber clean. Um, this one, you can see through, which makes it very nice. So I'm going to pull out this block, and this block is an H. And I'm going to try and line it up with my grid paper as best I can. Okay. Let's see if that will just fall down into place. Okay. And I'm going to use Mossy Meadow ink. I think using black would be, will be fine. But I think the Mossy Meadow, since I've used that with everything else, will, will really look nice. So I'm going to put right here. Oh, it didn't come out, the part, the top part. Let's see if I can get this here. No. So what you do in a case like this is you get a scrap piece of your white cardstock. So let me get a scrap piece and I'll show you what we're going to do. And I'm going to bring in, that's why you stamp first and paste later. So, I'm going to bring this in, and I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to stamp it right here. And, of course, it came out fine. And then, but it's not even level. So, I'm going to push this up here. Now, I want to make this... about the same actually so I'm going to slide this over it's sort of cationcus there this part is not though got that too close this is not my night you know when uh, when it rains it pours well that's the way I've been thinking all afternoon trying to deal with this technology it's gotten me in such a easy okay and I have there's marks here so I'm going to try to cut this well we don't have any of that all right that is just as crooked as it can be, and I don't like it. All right, we're going to try this again. Right here. Okay, that is much better. Much, much better. Sometimes it takes a few tries. Okay, I'm going to... Put that and about right there. Okay, 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to just paste that down. So before we go any farther, I'm going to close my ink so that's not a problem. And, and I'm going to give you a handy tip. When you've been working with ink, and it is on your hands, and I do not want to smudge my ink anywhere else, get hand sanitizer and rub it on your hands, and that will keep it from smudging. Let's clean off any of the glue you might have on it. Okay, so I'm going to get, now if I, and you can see I have used this before. This is, and that's what I do. I reuse. So if one side doesn't work and you can't tell it on the other side, I definitely use it. Now, we could have made this a decorative, um, and that would have been even better. Okay, there we go, that looks even. Now, here are a couple smudges right here. That looks like glue, but that's a little smudge. This Faber-Castell Perfection 7058B eraser pencil works wonders. You sometimes have to, to use your patience and you have to go at it from all different directions to get down in the fibers. But you can get it off. And there we go. All right. So now the inside is finished. All right. So now we have our outside. There's a little bit of glue right there. Let me get that I am so obsessive about things like this. If I had left it alone, it probably would have been fine. But I can't stand it. I have to get it off. So we've gotten everything off now, I think, except for that little bit right there. Um, what we need to do now is to add a little bit of bling. So I have... some jewels. These are the 2000 to 2023 in color jewels. Now, I'm going to, and these are actually fresh freesia, but they look like Highland Heather, the way that it's faceted. So I'm going to take my pick it up tool and I'm going to use this side. I'm going to place a jewel up here. I'm going to place a jewel right there. And a jewel down here. And there. Isn't that a beautiful card? And then you open it up. Sending many thanks for all you do. So, you can go on my blog by Friday and you will find the tutorial for this. Now, this is using all the wonderful world, um, the DSP, and the stamp set, um, the coordinating paper by turning it over. But the stamp set we use for the Sending Many Thanks is Happiness Abounds. Now, you could use any sentiment. This is just the one that I chose to put in there. All right. So we're finished with card number one with the wonderful world. What we're going to do now is do card number two. So let me slide this to the side. 
and I will bring that in. Okay, let's get all this out of the way. Because we're not going to be using, we are going to be using our Mossy Meadow ink. Um, but we're not going to be using these markers. I'm going to put those over here. And I'm going to put my jewels away so I don't lose them because they are so precious. All right, I'll put that, fix that later. Okay, so now let's get our surface clean. And let's start with this one. Now, I'll show you what we're going to make. Here we go. Life is better with friends like you. Now, you're going to say, what's wonderful world about that? This is wonderful world, this green strip. And this is wonderful world. And the way I came up with this, scraps. I needed to use my scraps. And then I had a piece that fit the back of my envelope just beautifully. So you have a very nice card here. So I'm going to show you how we did this basket weave and then where I got this because it mimics that and the sentiment. So let's get started. I've cut all of my pieces in advance like I said because I wanted to make sure we had time. And I have my notes here to let you know the dimensions as we work. The first thing we're going to do, no, my darling, here comes my kitty. No, 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 sorry. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this down. This is five and one fourth by four, just like the first layer and piece you normally cut. And it did not cut smoothly there. So you can run your finger sort of over it and it'll, well, not me. No. Let's slide it over. Got it too far to the edge there. There we go. That's much better. So we have our base right there. So the next thing we're going to do, we put this on the five and a half by eight and a half, scored it four and a fourth, and then creased with our bone folder. Got our base. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take, we've got some short strips, which will go this way. And we have some longer strips to go this way. Now, I had this yellow strip, and I'm going it is, let's see, this piece, the long strip is five and a fourth by one half inch, and this is five and five eighths by, I mean, five eighths by five and a half. So we're going to just go ahead and glue these pieces down. We're going to have a yellow strip and a green strip for each length. So we're going to glue it down. Okay. So here goes the yellow. Well, come on now. Get this lined up and evened up a little bit. Okay. There's our yellow. Then we're going to do the green, the long green one. Backing it on the mossy meadow. Right here. Okay, then we're going to do the shorter ones, and the shorter ones, the green part is four and a fourth by five eighths, 
and then this piece is four and one eighth by half an inch. And the same measurements for the other short strips. So we got two of the long ones that measure the same and two of the short ones that measure the same. So we're going to have a yellow one and a green one going in both directions. Okay. Alrighty. Now, what we have to do now is we'll have to do a little bit of ask weaving. And my hands are so sticky, I have got to get this off. So let me get a wipe. I always keep wipes handy so I can keep my hands and everything else clean while I'm working. Really got glue everywhere. Okay, so we have to do a basket weave. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to put the long yellow one down. And here comes my kitty again. No, darling, you're going to have to go in here. Suit. Okay. And then we're going to put the long green one beside it. Then you're going to go under and then over for this one and this one is going to go like this okay now I'm going to go ahead and glue where they connect here and then I'll turn it over and put the rest of the glue on all right, let me see if this one's less sticky. So I'm going to put, you know, I'm going to put, let's do it on the back side of this. I'm going to lay this back down in its proper place and I am going to do this like that. Yep, there's glue back there. All right, now then I'm going to put glue right here and glue this down on here. My goodness, this is quite challenging, it really is. I have to keep it lined up properly. All right. All right, so now we've gotten that like that. So this one would come like. already getting stuck down. This one would come like this. So I'm going to glue right here. A lot of glue came out. And you and I wonder why my hands get so sticky. Alright, here we go. Now that we've gotten this part, let's go ahead and glue this down. This one here. I think it's already glued on that side. And then we're going to glue this one. Get some of that glue up underneath there here 
and make sure we line it up there. All right, and then we're going to glue here. Man, it's coming out so freely. Whew. Now, if I hold this down. We'll go down here. that and then here like that okay a lot of glue a lot more than I should have used but it came out so quickly and now I've got glue everywhere that I'm going to have to try and get off because it'll drive me crazy. Most of the time you can just rub it with your hand and it'll just roll right off, which is what this is doing. It just happens to be more of it than normal. Alrighty, so we've got this glued down. And we're ready now for our sentiment, which would go here. So I cut this with one of the oval, layering ovals. And it fits here like that. And then this one fits right on top. So I decided for this that tasteful touches you are the best, fits there just perfectly. So before we paste, we'll slide that to the side. I'm going to show you this. You are the best right here. This one. Tasteful touches. And this is in the annual catalog. Okay, so I need a block. And I'm just going to put this down right here. Now, let's see if I can do that a bit better. All right, there we go. Now, I want to use the Mossy Meadow glue again for this as well. So I'm going to put that down. Not glue ink and ink this up and see if we can get it right here in the center okay you are the best and then we're going to glue it down come on Either comes out freely or not at all. Alrighty. You are the best. There we go. And then, silky baby, you can't get up here. I'm sorry. My kitty is persistent. I'll put glue on this. And glue that right down there. Okay. Now, it's fine like it is. But I just want to just spruce it up a bit. So, I found this. And it was in the Tasteful Touches. Right here, where we found our sentiment. And I stamped it in Mossy Meadow. And I used the dies that go with this. No, I didn't. I cut this out. This was fussy cut because I didn't have a die for this. So I used my scissors and I fussy cut around, in and around. So it's ready now to glue down. 
sew it. And as you can see, there was a, had too much of this. So I used the other side. Like I said before, this is running out. It either comes out not at all or like crazy. Alrighty. So, and I, I fiddled with it. I put it here, put it like that. I finally decided to put it right here where it just did touch that. Glue it down. And then I took some linen thread. And I want to want my hands again. And I got a, about, I'd say, six to eight inches. I always get too much, but I'd rather it be um, enough. And I know that's too much, so I'm going to go down some. And I, I think that's probably about, that's probably about eight inches. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this in. I doubled it. So I've got two strands here. And I'm going to make a bow. I better go down just a tad. Alrighty, so I've got a bow here. And I need to pull this side quite a bit this side. Pull it tight. And clip that side off some. Okay. So now, and we're going to put that right there like that. Now, I'm going to use a mini glue dot for this. And I'm going to just put this right on top of it. And it came right off on it. Now find that the glue dot does secure it better than anything else. However, because I obsess about these things, I put just a tiny bit of glue right there to catch the ribbon and a tiny bit on this side. So the ribbon won't go anywhere. Okay, so we might corral this just a bit. And this one just a bit. Okay. So there. We have it. Another beautiful card with the Wonderful World Designer Series paper. So we've got I can slide all this mess over here. Here's the one that we just made. Here's the one that I made earlier. And then, where did I put the others? Right here. Here's the one that we made. And here's the one that I made earlier. So we've got two beautiful cards there. Now, what I wanted to show you before I go, is that you can make this a beautiful set by taking your envelope and adhering your paper to the back right here. 
I'm going to look and see if we have a piece big enough that matches. That's my problem. I end up having, okay, yes, we do. So I'll show you. And I've got some scraps there too to make another card, and everything is falling. So these scraps I'll put away to use later, which I definitely will. I like to use every bit of my DSP and what I'm going to do here is instead of using the ink, the um, glue I'm going to use my runner for this because the glue sort of shines through it it's, it have sort of it's streaky so I'm going to use my uh, silicone mat get it going and I'm going to run my tape along the edges. And then a little bit in the middle. Then I'm going to place this down and I'm going to make sure that I get an edge to the end here so I won't waste any. And I put it right up to the crease, not over the crease, but right up to the crease because the envelope has got to, flap has got to bend. And I just go ahead and rub that down like that so it is adhered. Then I take my scissors, flip it over, and just run it right along. the edges here. Now some people say why would you waste your DSP on that? Well isn't it better to use it in this way make a nice uh, note card an envelope that matches than to put it away and then not use it? I think so. It's worth it to me. All right, there we go. So now we have our envelope. And it can go with either. Actually, it looks best with this one. Right here. So, there we have it. And you can do that for all of your uh, um, cards. You can make um, decorative envelopes in that way. I'm still finding adhesive. Now that it's dried, it's just rolling right off. That's another little tip. So, tonight we did uh, a new product and we did a fun fold right here. We used a new technique and we did a new uh, technique over here using scrap paper and making a basket weave. Look at the extra glue. My gracious. It will be sticky until it comes off. So that's why I'm trying to get it off. But I can get that off. And you learned how to make the back of your, your, um, your envelope decorative. So there we go. We have two beautiful cards. Now I'm going to swing you back up and I'm going to say now that I'm a little more with it um, and not so flustered as I was uh, at the beginning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and I hope that you have enjoyed what we've done today. And if you have, please, can you give me a comment or a thumbs up, even thumbs down if you prefer. Um, it helps to grow my channel, and I would really appreciate your support. Um, these cards, you know, were made with the Wonderful World stamp set, and that is in the Celebration catalog, and Celebration is a promotion that is running now from July to the end of August, 
Um, and with a $50 purchase at Stepping Up, you can get free items in the Celebration Catalog. And there are some cute, some really pretty things in there. Um, so with every, every $50 order, you can... Uh, amount you get a free item so now's the time to buy if you have thought about doing that and if you do not have a catalog a celebration catalog or a mini catalog um, please let me know I would be glad to send you one I would love to be your demonstrator if you're searching for one I'd love to earn your business um, and also um, I just appreciate having another crafter who enjoys paper crafting as much as I do, uh, viewing and joining me. And if you'd like to join to be uh, not a demonstrator, or if you want to be a demonstrator, you could be a hobbyist, or you could be a demonstrator, but joining has so many benefits um, besides the discount. It also provides you with a community of crafters that are very supportive and uh, that you can enjoy crafting with. There are, um, you have a free early access to new products uh, and there are just so many other benefits that um, can uh, behoove you uh, in, into joining. Um, if you do want to join, just let me know. My contact information um, is cindyphillips.stampinup.net. That's my store. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, it's Cindy's Creative Cards at gmail.com. Thank you so much for being with me. And remember, the tutorials will be on my blog, Cindy Stamps Happy at blogspot.com by Friday. Uh, have a great weekend or rest of your week in a weekend, and I'll see you next Wednesday with a surprise. Bye-bye.